Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Ninja AG551, or it's also known as the Ninja Foodie Max Health Grill and Air Fryer. And what I want to do today is to show you around the product, some of the features and benefits that it offers. But what I also want to do is to actually get it working and I want to try a couple of recipes to see if they really are as good as they say. Just before I start, all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel, click the thumbs up button, and what I normally do is I normally talk about sort of household appliances called as vacuum cleaners, and I'm starting to talk a lot more about this kind of product. And this video has really come around from one of my YouTube subscribers. So thank you to Roberto Sanchez. Uh, this is for recommending that I talk about grills and air fryers. Uh, this is because I did a review on toasters. So what he recommended is that I balance it out with I suppose healthier cooking. So this is thank you to Roberto Sanchez, so thanks very much. I know some of you might be watching this thinking, okay, this is another kitchen gadget to fill the covers with. Because over the years, and I've been in this industry quite a long time, over the years we've gone through the phases of things like the popcorn makers, the pie makers, waffle makers, donut makers. There's, there's a whole range of kitchen gadgets that people have got, they've used for a year or so, and then they end up going into the cupboard. Um, so I suppose the, the reason this really interests me is that it can do quite a lot. And on the front here it says it can grill, air fry, roast, bake, dehydrate, reheat. So it's not just one thing that it will do. Uh, but really what you need to do, as you can see, the box it comes in, it's, it's actually quite big. I was quite concerned that I could fit it either in the cupboard uh, or especially on the worktop when I'm going to be using it. So first of all, the dimensions on this, because you need to make sure that it will fit uh, on your worktop. So the depth of it, so front to back, is around 40 centimeters, or about 16 inches. The width of it is 38 centimeters, or about 15 inches, and the height so we're looking around 27 centimetres or about 10 and a half inches. So really, I suppose the first thing, before you consider buying anything like this, it doesn't even have to be this model, before you consider buying it, just make sure it fits either in the cupboard or on your worktop. So Ninja as a brand have been around for several years now, uh, but I suppose in the UK it's mainly the last sort of two or three years. Uh, they've, they've really got very popular. Uh, and what we are finding is that the range of products they do is ever-growing. Uh, they do a huge range of products, things like blenders, uh, air fryers, they do loads. Um, and as a company, we sell loads of these now. So I suppose the main reason that somebody would go for something like this, a health grill and air fryer, is clearly because it's hopefully going to be a lot healthier to cook with compared to cooking in a main oven, especially if you're using quite a bit of oil, or deep frying especially. One other advantage, and I think something that I suppose not a lot of people talk about, is the amount of electric that's used. Clearly, if you're going to use something like this, then if you're going to, say, do a roast in here, then if you're only heating up a smaller compartment like this, then overall, then you will save electricity compared to heating up a main oven. So that's something else to think about. You do get a handful of accessories with this, the first one is this, this is the cooking pot, it's 5.7 litre capacity. Uh, the next one is this, this is the crisper basket, so hopefully I'll give a demonstration of most of these in a moment. And the last one is this, this is the grill plate, and as you can see, I mean this is ideal for doing cooking your meat on it. And as you can, well, as you can see, you've got the, the grooves in here. So whenever you're cooking something, especially, I suppose, things like sausages uh, that can contain a lot of fat, then as it's cooking, then it will drip through and it will drip underneath. So at, at least the meat isn't sitting within the fat, which is really good as a, as a health benefit. The other thing to mention, all three of these are dishwasher safe. Um, I, it's something we tend to mention a lot in our showroom. A lot of people have got dishwashers, so I think it's a huge advantage having these as being dishwasher safe. 
The last thing that's included is this. This is a cheap little cleaning brush. Uh, with this, you've got quite stiff bristles. Uh, that can be really useful. So when you clean in the accessories, then that's included as well. The last accessory that this comes with is called a digital cooking probe. And it's actually hidden on the side here. Uh, this, um, to be fair, this is brilliant, just the way it's stored. It's actually held in with a magnet. And I know it's the simple things, but it's those kind of things that really impress me. Uh, so with this, this is, as I mentioned, stored on the side. Let's take this out. So this is a digital cooking probe. Um, it's not too long, it doesn't need to be very long, so it just plugs into the unit and then what you will do is you'll pop it within the meat and the main advantage of using something like this is you can select how you want things cooked. So if you're cooking something like a steak, whether you like it rare or well done, then by popping this through the steak into the middle, then you select how you want it cooking and you will get perfect results each time. So I'll show you around the unit itself now. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's got a lid that opens. Uh, I must admit, when you first look at it, it looks a little bit like a pizza oven, uh, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, but yet with this one, it does open. And you've actually got, just on the inside here, you've got a splatter guard or splash guard. And what this will do is as you take it off, so you just push that in and you can remove that. I'll just show you that. So that's really easy to keep clean. Uh, I suppose you can use the brush, just give it a, a rinse under water to keep it nice and clean. Or you can pop it in the dishwasher if you want to. Now that's the heating element at the top there. So you do need to make sure that you use that each time. So that just clips back in. Uh, that's a, a really good fit. Um, what you'll find is that each of those, so the earlier accessories that I showed you, I'll we'll just get that. So this is the, the main cooking pan. And uh, these will just sit in the top here like that. Um, when you first turn it on, you just press the button on the front. And you'll see you've got a really nice clear LED display. So there's quite a lot to it, uh, I suppose, when you first switch it on. So just to run you through the display itself, uh, the first one you've got is air fry. And what you'd normally do is you would actually select which one you want to use. Uh, you've got the temperature at which you want to cook at, and then you've got the duration for how long you want to cook. So on the air fry, so this one goes from 150 degrees, and that goes all the way up to 240. And the roast, you've got the option to go from 120 degrees, and that will go all the way up to 220. The grill is slightly different, so clearly you've got uh, max, high, medium, and then low. Yeah, that's as low as it goes. And then bake, so that starts at 120 degrees, and that can go all the way up to 210 degrees. And then the next option is reheat, so that starts at 130 degrees and that can go up to 210. So, so really it's quite a good option. Um, it's something that's not really talked about a huge amount with uh, reheating food, uh, but this is apparently really good at it, uh, especially for things like pizza slices. Uh, I must admit, in our house, then we don't often have food that is left to reheat, especially when it comes to pizza slices. Uh, but what you can do is, you can find that when you go to reheat things like pizza slices, that there's nothing worse than just stick it in the microwave for 30, 40 seconds, and then it's all soggy, and the base is soggy. It's, it's not a nice experience at all. So what you can do is you can just reheat it in the health grill and air fryer, and what you'll find is it should hopefully taste as good as when it was first made. So after the reheat, then the next option is dehydrate. And with this, this will go from 40 degrees and it goes up to 90 degrees. And once you've selected which one you want, so if you just select the air fryer, then the duration, 
So you just select here, and this is this is in minutes. So if you wanted to air fry something, say 200 degrees for 40 minutes, then that's what you would do. And then once it's in there, and you shut the lid, and then all you would do is you will press start. And what it will do is it is recommended each time you cook to preheat it. So I'm thinking of talking about the product. What I need to do is I need to give it a go. So I'm going to do a couple of recipes. Now the first thing to mention is that I'm no chef. I'm, I'm not a professional cook in any way, shape or form. So please don't judge me on my cooking ability. Uh, I do enjoy cooking at home. Uh, I've got quite a few different appliances. Uh, and this genuinely is the first time I've used one of these products and the first time I've used an air fryer. So the first thing I want to try is to do some vegetable crisps. Uh, it's something that we quite enjoy as a family. So I thought I'd just try some in the air fryer first of all. So let's have a go. So a couple of things I'm gonna try. The first one, some of these, these are beetroot. So I'm going to peel them and then I use a, a grater or a mandolin. And what this will do is this will just slice them really thinly. Uh, something like this is normally preferred uh, compared to actually using a knife to chop them because when you are air frying vegetables, then apparently you do need them really thin and that can be a huge advantage. And the next one I want to try is a sweet potato. Uh, something that, especially the last couple of years as a family, we've we do eat quite a few sweet potatoes just as an alternative to normal potatoes. So let's have a look. So just make sure that you've got all of the skin off there. So that's the, the beetroot and my red fingers. And let's just get the, the grater. So now I've got the beetroot all sliced. And I must admit, I, I'll be honest, I didn't actually end up using uh, the slicer. Uh, I did find that it didn't perform quite as I wanted. So what I've done is I did actually use a knife to cut them quite thinly. And the idea is I'm using the crisper basket for this one. Uh, but what you need to do, and everything's falling off because I got it at an angle at the moment. Um, but what you need to do, just line the bottom of this with all the beetroot or any vegetables that you've got. Make sure you don't overlap any of them because uh, what you'll find is if you do overlap them then they won't cook as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this in here with all the beetroot and when I switch this on so what I want to do is I want to air fry and with this model you do actually get a you do get a, a recommended cookbook that comes with it. Uh, you can see here I've still got my red fingers and uh, in here it does you've got quite a few recipes so there's quite a lot in here to especially if you're quite a newbie to air frying and health grill frying as well which to be fair i am uh, so it's it is a, a really good guide as to different recipes to cook uh, but at the back here you've got the air fry chart and it just gives you rough times as to how long to cook things for so I'll be honest, for me, it's a little bit of a guess, uh, but most of the vegetables that are cooked are on at 200. So let's try this on at 200. And initially I'll put it on for 20 minutes. Uh, apparently with very thin vegetables, uh, they cook quite quickly. So what you need to do first of all, is you need to preheat it. So let's just take that one out and Let's press the start button. So I'll just wait for that to preheat and I'll line all the beetroot in here and then we should be ready to go. So now you'll see on the front here it does say add food. So it's preheated and it's ready to go. Now just in the meantime what I have done is I've actually just put a little bit of oil onto the beetroot because uh, this can really help to crispen them up. Now when it comes to the oil, uh, I'm not going to go too much into it uh, but Ninja do recommend to use certain types of oil. Uh, basically what they recommend is vegetable oil, coconut, grapeseed or avocado oil. Um, I know a lot of people tend to use olive oil, uh, but some of these other oils that I just mentioned, the, the main advantage is they have a, a higher smoke point, 
than something like olive oil. So that's just really a recommendation. So let's just pop that in. I could have actually left that in in the first place. So I'll just shut the lid. And that's set to go now. So as you can see, it's on at 200 degrees C. Uh, if you want to, you can change it to Fahrenheit, uh, but it's got the timer now. So that is initially on at 20 minutes. But what I will do, every probably three or four minutes, I'll check just to see how they're doing. So these have been in for about six minutes now. And I don't know if you can see, uh, but even after about three or four minutes, uh, you could really smell them. Uh, they, they're really coming on. Uh, clearly, because of, you know, I'm quite new to this, so there's quite a mixture where um, some of them are thicker than others. And just try and grab that one. So just show you, so that that's not quite, quite cooked yet, but this is a, a thinner one. And that is not far off being cooked. Uh, so I will just give them another couple of minutes and then just see how they're doing. What you will find is that some of them have sort of blown around, so I'm just trying to separate them again, uh, just to make sure that they're cooking quite even. But so far, I'm really happy with these. So that's about eight minutes that they've had now. And I must say, these are looking really good. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll take these out because uh, it looks like most of these are quite cooked now. And the next one I want to try are these are sweet potato. So I've cut these up. Uh, I've put them in a, a little bit of oil. There's only a tiny fraction of oil. And also, and from what I've been recommended, I've put a little bit of salt on them as well. It can just enhance the flavor. So I'm gonna swap these over, uh, get these into the air fryer, and then start again. So now I've got the sweet potato in here, then I will just shut the lid and again, select air fry. And what I am gonna do is I'm actually going to select a slightly lower temperature just to try it. Um, I must admit the beetroot, although it does taste really nice, uh, that's just a, an example of one of them. And um, hopefully you can hear that, it is quite crispy. If anything, on some of them, they're probably in a little bit too long. I should have kept a closer eye on it. But as I say, that's the first time with me trying this. So what I want to do is I'm gonna try the sweet potato on a slightly lower temperature at 190, just see whether it makes a difference. And I'll still put it on for 20 minutes, but I will keep a closer eye on it. So now I've got that done, then let's press start. So these have been in, it's about five, well, four minutes now. And Let's just take a couple out to show you. These are looking really good. Um, I'd say some of these are pretty much done. Uh, I suppose some of the, the thinner ones uh, because there's there's quite a mixture as to the, the thicknesses. I'll try to get them the same. But you can see some of them are starting to brown on the side. So I think what I'll do, I'm gonna take some of the, the smaller ones that are a little bit thin, I'm gonna take these out and then let the rest cook. And in the meantime, what I have been doing is I'm working on the next one. So I want to try some burgers, um, but anyway, let's get these finished. So now that the sweet potato's done, uh, I must say, I mean, again, this is only the second time I've done this, uh, but I did find that beetroot was much better after I put it on a plate and you leave it for a couple of minutes. Uh, as you can see, some of them are quite crispy that's probably a little bit overcooked, uh, but the majority uh, look and I have tasted them and they do taste really nice. So anyway, I'll put that to the side because what I want to do now is I want to try some burgers. So what I want to do is I want to use this, I want to use the meat probe or digital cooking probe as Ninja call it. And what you do is you just pop it in the side here. So that's clicked in the side and uh, let's turn it back on. So what we need to do then is to select the grill and default, it will come on as high. So we'll leave that as it is. Uh, but what we need to do, because I'm going to use the meat Pro, is to select a preset and then we just find the beef. 
so we'll find the beef. So from there, then that's, yep, yeah, so if we select medium well, um, a lot of this will be trial and error, and I suppose, again, this is the first time I've, I'm using it for this kind of cooking. So I've just pressed start, and what it's doing now is it is preheating. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is always recommended to preheat it before you put any of the food in. So this will just take a minute, and then I'll put the food in in a moment. Okay, so now it's saying add food, which means that it is up to temperature. Now, one thing just to show you, so what I need to do is I need to insert the digital probe into the side of one of the patties or burgers. Uh, but what you need to do is you need to make sure it's in the thickest part of the meat. And it's the same with any of the meat that you're putting in. Because uh, if you don't, if you put it in incorrectly, uh, then what you'll find is that the food won't cook properly. Uh, it can be trial and error, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll pop it in the side there so that's it, so that's just in the side. Um, I've tried to make the burgers the same size, the same thickness, so hopefully they cook at around the same time. So I always love to hear that sizzling sound. So just pop that one in the middle. Um, I'm going to put the rest in. Um, I'm just going to go and wash my hands first. So just give those a quick rinse after handling the raw meat. And then um, what we do is we shut the lid. So just make sure that's nice and tightly shut. And what it, you'll see is on the front here, it actually shows you the current temperature of the patty inside. And the target temperature is 59 degrees. So what it does, it's showing you that it's at a rare at the moment. And clearly I want it to be cooked, cooked properly. So this will be really interesting to see how long it takes. I must admit, I'm always a little bit impatient with things like this. So I'm just gonna have a cheeky little look. And as you can see, it, I mean, they've only been in probably, what, four or five minutes. And they are already looking really, really good. Now in the instructions, it does say that you don't have to flip them. So I'm not gonna to touch them at all. I'm just gonna wait until it gets up to the 59 degrees now. So as you can see, it's almost ready. This is at 57 or 58 degrees, and it's aiming for 59. Uh, what I do really like is on the display, it's showing you how well the burgers are cooked. So it started off at rare, and as the temperature's gone up, then it's showing you, it's, giving, it's almost like a progress indicator. So any minute now, then look at that. So it's saying get food. So let's see how these are looking. And these are looking really, really good. So as I say, I try to do them all the same thickness. Let's just show you that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just check to make sure these are cooked properly. So I'll just quickly show you that. Uh, I know some people like burgers cooked differently, uh, but for me, for the way we like it, that's that's perfect. Um, the only other thing to mention, when you are cooking with this, so when you're cooking with the meat pro, uh, just be really, really careful. Uh, because even on here at the, the end here, it is really, really hot. So you just need to make sure that when you take that out and unplug it, uh, just be careful not to touch that because it will be really hot. So that's all five of them. Uh, as you can see, they, to be fair, they look really, really good. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, gonna go and have my dinner. And the really good thing about this, as I mentioned earlier, it is all dishwasher safe. So this grill pan here, and even the pan underneath, uh, what we can do, once it's all cooled down, then you can actually pop it into the dishwasher. So if you are thinking of buying one of these, then I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Ninja AG551 Health Grill and Air Fryer. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video. 
leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video itself. If you are thinking about buying one of these, and if you've got any questions, then just pop it in the comments. And again, if you have got one of these, or if you've got, say, a Ninja Air Fryer, then let me know what you think about it, because I'd always appreciate the feedback. Thanks for watching.